Hello everyone, this is Gleb, and today I want to show a couple of examples that are almost the same, but they show principles of retroability, querying, printing, and the current subject. Imagine I have a list with three elements. It's a static list, that means it's immediately available. So if you get the number of elements, then you can confirm that they are free. So we can get fruits and inside ally elements and we can confirm that this jQuery object has length three. There are three elements. Perfect. Now, what if a list is dynamic? So I'm going to go to the next example and notice that right here the list is loaded after a delay. How would you write this test? Well, guess what? It works exactly the same way because this query commands I get if the assertion fails, goes back and retries the site get again and again. So you can see how it keeps retrying, retrying, and then it's satisfied and it moves on to the next command. All right, uh, what happens if the uh, list is loading, but slowly? So in this case, after two seconds, you see the first element, after two more seconds, you see the second and so on. If we try to use the same test, right? it will fail. So let's see this in action. So notice no elements, then the first one appears, the second, and the command times out. Yes, the third element does appear, but after the task has already failed. If you want to vary how long the command retries, you set a timeout, let's say six and a half seconds, in the command itself. So it keeps retrying and retrying for six and a half seconds, which gives enough time for the list to load. So this is the maximum. If the list loads quickly, let's say one second, uh, one and 100 milliseconds, one and a half, then it waits only the maximum time needed to see the elements and move on. Okay, now imagine we waited for the elements, right? How would we print the number of elements in the list? And we want to print it right here in the command log. So we can remove a timeout. We confirm the number of elements. Well, this yields a jQuery object with elements. So we can get its length property and then pass it to a callback so we can use it inside a side log. So for example, found and elements. Okay, now, because site then breaks the chain of retries, right, we cannot add more assertions on the number of elements. Another thing that I don't like about this syntax is that you have to write a callback just to get the current subject and just to pass it to a site log. If you use my Cypress map plugin that's already available in this recipe, then you can do simple uh, syntax, you can get the element, so fruits, ally, you can add an assertion, fruits have length three, then you can get its property length, and then use the child command print, and you can even use syntax for placing uh, the value into the message, kind of like printf style. So found number elements. Okay, notice it uh, printed it, but even better, we can move assertion and change it to equal. Okay, so now we have three commands before the assertion and the whole chain of three commands retries. So um, keeps retrying and retrying and retrying until it's passed. Okay, what if the number of elements that are in the loaded list is unknown or could be one of two choices. For example, in half of cases, it's three, in another half, it's five. Let's get the elements and we can say it's length. And remember, those two queries will retry together and we can use the assertion should be one of, and then we can provide uh, values, I think, um, three, Five. So it's an array notation of all possible values. Uh, I forgot to set only. Let's write on run only this test. 
Okay, so found five elements and it's one of the values three or five. Five again, and if, if PC only three, no problem, it's one of the allowed choices. Now, if we know the upper and lower limits, then instead of um, one of, we can use an assertion within, we can say should be within and just specify lower and upper limits. Works the same way in this case. Now, what if we don't know the values or exact number, but we know that it should follow a specific rule. So for example, in this case, it could be three or six, maybe it could be nine. So we know it's divisible by three. What we could do in this case, use an assertion should satisfy and give a predicate function that will receive a value of a current subject and should return a Boolean. So we'll say if you divide it by three, then it should be zero. Okay, again, let me just run only this test. So what do we have here? We have a length three and it satisfies the function um, divided by three. And if you have absolutely general rule, you can write your custom assertion using should and then a callback. So instead of building chai assertion, you can provide your own callback and you can say expect n, for example, uh, to let's do the same thing to satisfy the same predicate. So we can use any number of chai assertions. We can use multiple chai assertions. For example, we can say expect n, let's say positive, to be greater than let's say zero, right? So we can have multiple assertions. We can throw our own errors if um, something is not as satisfied. So it's pretty flexible. Okay. So these are a couple of examples of confirming the length of a list in different scenarios, static, dynamic, you know, the number, you know, several numbers, you know, general predicate. Find this example at my uh, Cypress example site that I will link in the description of this video. If you have any questions, uh, add a comment with a question.